Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Last Friday was Student Government Day, a day upon which the entire administration of the city is handed over to high school pupils who have been elected by their classmates. Well, ordinarily, our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, would have very little to do with this event. But unfortunately, Miss Johnson, the civics teacher, took ill on Thursday, and our principal, Mr. Conklin, suggested that I take over her class. Of course, I didn't have to accept the assignment. I just figured that teaching is better than being totally unemployed. <laughs> In some states, it's better. <laughs> At any rate, I conducted Miss Johnson's civics class on Thursday, and on the subject, what would I do if I held public office, the class and I had quite a spirited discussion. And in view of later developments, I'm sorry I didn't listen. But Friday morning finally rolled around, and the entire student body and faculty gathered in the assembly hall to hear Mr. Conklin officially proclaim it Student Government Day. Mr. Boynton, my bashful biologist, was sitting in the front row, and accidentally, with the aid of two bloodhounds, I found myself sitting right next to him. <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Why, Mr. Boynton, this is a surprise. To you, anyway. <laughs> I didn't see you sit down. I believe I left my notebook on that seat. It, it's just some lecture notes on the North American porcupine. Oh, sorry, Mr. Boynton. I didn't even notice it. He must have pulled in his quills. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, thanks. I, I'll just hold it in my lap. Why don't we let the notebook have the seat and you could hold... No, not in school, I guess. <laughs> you know, Miss Brooks, something just occurred to me. We're always sitting next to each other in assembly. Fate seems to be throwing us together. Compared to my throwing, fate is a sandlot pitcher. <laughs> but perhaps you're right, Mr. Boynton. Maybe we should give fate a helping hand. I'm free for lunch today. How about you? Or would you rather ask me? Or am I being too subtle? <laughs> oh, darn that bell. I'll have to get him in the next round. <laughs> Students, faculty members, and honored guests. First of all, as your principal, I would like to announce that because this is Student Government Day, school will be suspended. Please, please, please. <laughs> I sympathize with your disappointment. But as you know, Student Government Day has been tried successfully in many other communities, and I have always been ready to experiment in any progressive plan to foster good citizenship. That is why you see before you on this platform our honored guest... Mayor Rimson. Now, Mayor Rimson, would you care to say a few words? Of course not. He only brought those nine pages along to put his gum in. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Conklin, for your generous introduction. <clears throat> As I look out upon this ocean <laughs> of young, eager, intelligent faces, a tide of emotion swells up in me. I'm getting a little seasick myself. <laughs> and as I think of the glorious future which this community can look forward to at the hands of these youths, I am deeply touched. I have always been well informed on the affairs of young people. He ought to be. He's kissed so many babies you can't see his tie for the pablum. <laughs> And so it is with considerable pride that I now inaugurate for the first time in this community Student Government Day. Therefore, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you your duly elected mayor, Miss Harriet Conklin. You may applaud now. Thank you. My constituents, friends, and Mayor Rimson. I intend to show this community something new and different by making my term of office a clean and honest administration. Well, no. <laughs> we will not tolerate graft and corruption. We well, no. <laughs> Thank you, Harriet Conklin. <laughs> As Miss Brooks said in our civics class yesterday, the racketeers must go, no matter what politician is protecting them. Oh. Oh, that Miss Brooks certainly is a card. <laughs> that will be all, Harriet. 
you really say that in civics class? I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> there, Remsen, allow me to apologize for my daughter's enthusiasm. Oh. Uh, she was obviously referring to the aims of city governments in general without realizing that those aims have already been attained in our community. Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce the student who has been elected your chief of police. Walter Denton. Thank you. Thank you, friends. As your incumbent police chief, I cannot re-emphasize too forcefully the remarks Miss Brooks made in civics class yesterday. <laughs> to wit, every crook and grafter who has been mulcting the city treasury of funds has got to... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief of Police Walter Denton. I haven't finished my speech. Oh, yes, you have, Denton. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin, as Miss Brooks said just yesterday... This is not a symposium on the memoirs of Miss Brooks. Or maybe it is. Miss Brooks, you here? No, I couldn't make it today. <laughs> What's that? Oh, oh, there you are. Before we go any further, isn't there something you'd like to say? Yes, sir. Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Yes, Miss Brooks, I did. In spite of my abject apologies, Mayor Rimson left here in a very ugly mood. And Miss Brooks, just what happened in civics class yesterday? Well, we had an open discussion, and somebody opened it wider than I realized. <laughs> <laughs> but we only discussed corrupt city administrations in general, Mr. Conklin. We made no specific mention of Mayor Rimson's corrupt administration. <laughs> I mean, uh... Uh, never, never mind what you mean. Thanks to you, we've got a band of young malcontents on our hands. Why, not five minutes ago, a student delegation was in here demanding a three-day school week. And that's not all. They also informed me that they would like a four-hour day, starting from the moment they leave home till the moment they arrive back there. <laughs> that's portal to portal. Next thing you know, they'll be wanting time and a half for leaving the room. <laughs> There's no telling how far this thing can go. They've got the whip hand. They're in public office today. Student government day indeed. Whoever thought up that crack-brained idea ought to have his head examined. Bend over, Mr. Conklin. What? It was your idea. Oh, well, don't change the subject. There's no telling... What... <laughs> As I was saying, there's no telling what that student reform party is capable of doing. Miss Brooks, it's up to you to see that they stay out of mischief. But, Mr. Conklin, you said this was a holiday, and I've got a very important lunch date to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. You've got to chaperone those students. But, Mr. Conklin... Dismiss, but Miss Brooks. I said fall out. On the double. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Fine way to spend a holiday, chaperoning a bunch of... What am I running about? I'm halfway down the hall. <laughs> well, that's funny. I stopped right outside Mr. Boynton's biology lab. <laughs> well, I might as well go in now that I'm here. <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Well, say, I hope Mr. Conklin wasn't too severe with you. Not at all, Mr. Boynton. How are you at setting bones? <laughs> and speaking of lunch, which you weren't, the date we almost had, but didn't quite because you didn't get around to asking me and which I was going to talk you into, but which I would have had to cancel because Mr. Conklin wants me to chaperone the students who are acting as government officials today. Oh, well, just a minute, Miss Brooks. I, I can't quite follow you. Me either, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> I suppose I'm trying to apologize for standing you up. When? Today. You were supposed to have lunch with me today? How nice of you to ask me. <laughs> Shall we say the front steps in 15 minutes? Oh, but... I just uh, want to powder my nose and fix up a bit. But you said something about chaperoning the students. Oh, that can wait till after lunch. See you in a little while, Mr. Boynton. I wonder if I'm playing too hard to get. <laughs> now, if I can just avoid her honor, the mayor, and Walter Denton... Well, Walter, there's Miss Brooks. Uh -oh. Hiya, Miss Brooks. We've been looking for you. I've been lurking from you, too. <laughs> Miss Brooks, as mayor of this community... I feel that I have you to thank for many of my high ideals. Me too, Miss Brooks. When you stood up in civics class yesterday with a, a kind of glowing, luminous light emanating from your skull and your chalk <laughs> poised in front of the blackboard, you know who you reminded me of? Joan of Arc at the Battle of the Erasers. 
Brooks. Look, kids, I promised Mr. Conklin I'd chaperone you today, Wonderful, but I have to... Miss Brooks. We're really going to clean up this town. You have no idea what's going on in this town, Miss Brooks. If you'll just stick with us, we'll show you graft and corruption, infamy and greed. I'd rather have Mr. Boynton show me spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'll just keep quiet about it, I'll meet Mr. Boynton for lunch. Lunch? And... But what about the ideas of decent, honest government that you had yesterday? Yeah, and don't you want to be in at the kill? Who are we killing? I'm afraid we'll have to take an executive action, Walter. Right. Miss Brooks, I assume you still believe in obedience to duly elected authority? Of course I do, Walter. Then, as chief of police, I hereby appoint you deputy sheriff. For the rest of the day, Miss Brooks, you'll take orders from me. But, Walter... Silence! Oui, mon capitaine. <laughs> Here, with this badge, I hereby make you a deputy sheriff. Look, Walter, to you I'm a deputy sheriff, and to Harriet I'm a deputy sheriff. But to a deputy sheriff, am I a deputy sheriff? Hmm? <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Ladies, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care, doctors prove you too may win a lovelier complexion with palm olive soap. But to win this lovelier complexion, the kind men admire and women envy, you must stop improper cleansing. Instead, use palm olive soap the way doctors advise. Remember, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advised 1,285 women, many with complexion problems, to use palm olive this way. Some had dry skin, some oily, some coarse looking. Using palm olive soap alone, two out of three won lovelier complexions. Now, here's what the doctors advised Wash your face with palm olive soap, massaging for one minute with palm olive's soft lather. This cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive's full beautifying effect. Rinse. Do this three times a day for 14 days. It's that simple. But doctors have proved this way, using nothing but palm olive, really works. So forget other beauty care. Use palm olive soap alone for a lovelier complexion. For loveliness all over, use big thrifty bath size palm olive in your tub or shower. <laughs> You'd better pull over, Walter. Why, Miss Brooks? Oh, oh, the siren. No, that's on our car. I put it on this morning. I don't want to see insubordinate, Chief, but just where are we going? To the Jackpot Amusement Company's warehouse. We've been watching the place for weeks, Miss Brooks, in preparation for today. And we've seen truckloads of slot machines delivered there. Slot machines? Sure. The kind they put in the back of candy stores where little school kids can spend their lunch money in a futile effort to get rich quick. You know... Where you pull a lever and try to hit as many bumpers as possible? Oh, the game I play in my car. <laughs> well, those kind aren't so bad. It's the one-armed bandits that keep the kids broke. Oh, they're all fixed. Fixed? Sure. If a machine pays back more than five cents on a dollar, they break its arm. <laughs> here we are. The Jackpot Amusement Company. What are we going to do here? We're going to raid the place. We three? No, there's another bunch of kids coming any minute. You see, the fire commissioner had to go home and change his pants. He tore him sliding down the pole at the firehouse. <laughs> well, are you all ready, men? Speaking for some of us men, no. Now, when I blow my police whistle, we'll charge. Sorry, I don't have an account here. <laughs> Let's go. I'm with you, Walter. Oh, now, Walter, Harriet, listen. Let's go to a movie. Open up in the name of the law. Are you going to open up or do we have to break it in? Walter, please. Stand in back of Miss Brooks, Harriet. Oh, fine. Now they're going to use me for a battering ram. <laughs> What's going on out here? Trick or treat. <laughs> What's that? Are you one of the employees of the Jackpot Amusement Company? What if I am? You're under arrest. What? Miss Brooks, you're a deputy sheriff. Arrest this man. Pull over to the curb, bud. <laughs> Look, lady, I'm a busy man. Why don't you just take your kids over to the playground and shove them down a sharp slide? <laughs> now beat it. Oh, resisting arrest, eh? This may go hard with you, my good man. What's going on here? Who blew the police whistle? I did. Officer, arrest this man. What did he do? Let me try to get fresh with you, lady. No, and that's the story of my life. <laughs> uh, 
Then what do you want him arrested for? Yours not to reason why. As your chief of police, I gave an order. Your duty is to obey. How does that go again, Sonny? You heard him, officer. As mayor, I decree that you arrest this individual. Well, let me get this straight. You're the mayor, and he's the chief of police. Ah, who are you, lady? I'm Joan of Arc, and stop breathing on my armor. <laughs> I do not wish to be rude, but I have to go in now. You see, I am Little Miss Muffet, and I have to go sit on my tuffet for a while. <laughs> this is your last chance, officer. Arrest that man in there, or tomorrow you'll be pounding a beat in a swamp. Oh, pounding a beat in a swamp, is it? Do you realize this is insubordination? Oh, insubordination, is it? You've just got to arrest that man. Oh, arrest that man, is it? This is getting monotonous, was it? <laughs> Look, folks, why don't you all run along and we'll forget about the whole thing? Oh, that settles it. Miss Brooks, arrest this policeman. Arrest this policeman, is it? Now, don't start that again. Will you go quietly, or do I have to use the bracelets? Take it easy, lady. We'll settle this in a minute. That doesn't frighten anybody. I got one of those, too. Good for you, Sonny. Some people don't seem to be familiar with the Constitution of the United States, which says... We, the people of the United States or of America, for that matter, the in Declaration order to form of a more perfect union, which says, establish justice. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner the eating his Christmas pie. <laughs> he stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum, and along came the Black Mariah. <laughs> Miss Brooks. He won't even listen to us. Let me call him. After all, I'm still mayor. Fine mayor. She's been in office six hours and the whole administration's up the river. <laughs> it's as much your fault as mine. You and your police whistle. Now, don't start bickering, children. Maybe if we behave ourselves, they'll make us trustees. Hello out there. Oh, guard. Jailer. Turnkey. Shut up. My, what ill-bred screws. <laughs> yes, yes, Mrs. Denton, I'll call you the minute I hear from Walter. Goodbye. Imagine that, Martha. Mrs. Denton wanted me to call the police department. How would they know where her son Walter is? I can't understand it, Martha. You can't understand what, Osgood? That's the fifth parent who's called me up to ask why her child hasn't come home for dinner yet. You'd think they'd keep track of their children and not suddenly discover at 7 o'clock that they haven't come home for dinner yet. By the way, where's Harriet? She hasn't come home for dinner yet. What? Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Call Miss Brooks. I put the children in her charge. Call the police. The Bureau of Missing Persons. Get the district attorney. Contact the mayor. Find out if there's somebody else. Why don't they... Well, maybe you could get hold of them. But I don't know what you... What are you just standing there for? I'm here. I'm concerned. Why are you not concerned? Why don't you do something? Good. Oh, <laughs> Sometimes you sound like a walrus caught in a Turkish bath. <laughs> I did call Miss Brooks. Mrs. Davis says she wasn't home yet. Poor woman. She's had dinner on since six. She's terribly worried about her stewed tomatoes. Please stop sniveling about Mrs. Davis's tomatoes. We've got our own tomato to worry about. <laughs> Please, dear, calm down a little. Here, have some fruit. It's very good for the nerves. I don't want any fruit. Oh, that's probably Harriet now. I'll answer it. I mustn't lose my temper. I must be calm. <laughs> Hello. Osgood. You're talking in a banana. <laughs> no wonder with the house all cluttered up with fruit bowls. Hello? Is that you, Harriet? No, Osgood. This is Margaret Davis. Oh. I've just had a call from Miss Brooks. You have? Yes, sounds good. Harriet, Walter, Denton, and several of the other students are with her. Oh, oh thank heavens. <laughs> Tell me, Margaret, where are the children and Miss Brooks? They're in jail, Osgood. <laughs> fine, fine. You see, Martha, I told you there was nothing to worry about. Miss Brooks and the children are all in jail. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Martha, take this phone out of my hands and put back the banana. <laughs> Here are 
of the prisoners, young fella. You may talk with them, but don't try to pass anything through the bars. Oh, thank you. Why, it's Mr. Boynton. Hi, Mr. Boynton. We've been framed. About that luncheon date, I don't think I can make it. <laughs> what is all this, Miss Brooks? Haven't you heard? We're celebrating Student Convict Day. <laughs> we were only doing our duty as public servants, but Mayor Rimson must have forgotten to notify any of the other authorities. Yeah, we raided some racketeers, and the next thing we knew, we were in the pie wagon. Well, they, they have no right to hold you here. Oh, officer. Officer. What is it now? Why, there, there's been a mistake. Please open this cell and let these people out of here. Oh, let these people out of here, is it? Well, yes, it just happens that I've had quite a bit of legal training in addition to my biological background, and I can tell you that you have no legal basis upon which to hold them any longer. Good for you, Mr. Boynton. That's telling him, Mr. B. And furthermore, I'm sure you don't want to get into any trouble. Oh, I don't, don't I? Tell him you'll have him pounding a beat in the swamp. Uh, if you persist in this belligerent attitude, you're liable to be pounding a beat in a swamp. That's done it! I knew you'd see it my way. At last, Mr. Boynton, just you and I and the children. <laughs> this is absurd. I don't belong in this cell. Now, now behave sir. yourself. Behave yourself or I'll put you in solitary. Oh, there you are, Connie. What's Mrs. Davis? I would have been here sooner, but I just had to stop at the mass meeting. What mass meeting, Mrs. Davis? Oh, Mr. Boynton is with you. How nice. Uh Please, Mrs. Davis, we've got to get out of here. Now, if you'll only see... Everybody in town was there, Connie. And I told them what you said to me on the phone about student government day being run all wrong. Good for you, Mrs. Davis. Now maybe we'll get some action. Where's the Brooks cell? <laughs> the line forms on your left. I also told those parents how you said that if you had been running Student Government Day instead of Mr. Conklin, there wouldn't have been so much dunderheaded bumbling. Uh, bumbling? Oh, hello, Osgood. We were just talking about you. Anybody want to buy a used teacher's license? <laughs> oh. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Now that Mr. Conklin's here, I'm sure there's nothing further to worry about. Miss Brooks, how could you... Why did you have to... When were you... Oh, please, Mr. Ever... Conklin, remember your blood pressure. It wasn't Miss Brooks' fault, Daddy. Don't blame her. And you, Harriet, in prison. How could you do this to me? My own flesh and blood. If you've got his blood, Harriet, you better watch your pressure, too. <laughs> Quiet, Denton. Miss Brooks, it's my painful duty to inform you that you are under suspension for conduct unbecoming a teacher. Have you anything to say in your own defense? Yes, Your Honor, I'd like a new trial. <laughs> on, uh, on what ground? On the grounds that I'm not doing so well in this one. <laughs> well, we'll discuss that at the proper time. Meanwhile, you children remain here in Mr. Boynton's charge until I can arrange to have... Mr. Boynton? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Conklin. What in the world are you doing here? I'm just visiting, Mr. Conklin. One of those guests you just can't get rid of. <laughs> Well, we'll see all about this. I'm going straight to Mayor Rimson's office. I'll handle this matter personally. Oh, but what'll I do in the meantime? With a little luck, 30 days. <laughs> well, you've done a lot for me, H.J., but I can't understand why we're dumping this slot machine deal. Because it's too hot, Mayor. Besides, our cut ain't big enough. Also, the people are up in arms. The people? What do they know about it? Ed, I'm surprised at you. What do my initials stand for? H.J., Honest Jim. I'm the people's friend, Ed, and we got an election coming up. We can't afford to let the people get upset, or the first thing you know, they'll start thinking for themselves. And then where are we? Okay, Jim, okay. I'll have the jackpot company get rid of those machines right away. No, I've got a better idea. Ed, you're going to make yourself a hero with every parent in this community. Huh? You're going to let the kids do this job, the kids who were elected to public office for this one day. Wonderful, Jim, wonderful. I'll call all my department heads and I'll tell them the students holding office that I have complete authority. Fine, Ed. It's democracy in action. That's what it is. Yes, sir, democracy in action. <laughs> and Mayor Rimson is solidly behind it. Until, until after the election. election. <laughs> Which one of you is Mayor Harriet Conklin? I am. Step out, please. Now, which one of you is Chief of Police Denton? Oh, that's me. Come on out. I've had orders to release the both of you. Oh, but what about Miss Brooks and myself? Sorry, my orders didn't say anything about you two. 
But I insist that you release them immediately. Quiet, Walter. Orders are orders. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumit's magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream... Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, in spite of everything, Walter and Harriet got us out of jail promptly. And that wasn't the only thing Student Government Day accomplished. The racketeers left town almost immediately. In fact, the very next day, Walter took me out to the jackpot warehouse for a last look at the place. Pretty deserted now, isn't it? Yes, it is, Walter. Let's go in and see if they've cleaned out the slot machines. I'm going to look around in back, Miss Brooks. Go ahead, Walter. Say, here's one of those nickel machines. <laughs> what a racket. Naturally, two lemons and an anchovy. <laughs> If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Crime does not pay. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, dream girl hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Helen Spring, Hans Conried, Hal March, and Herb Vigran. <laughs> Do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palm Olive shaving cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palm Olive brushless or Palm Olive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof: 2,548 men tried the new Palm Olive way to shave described on the tube, and no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. Today, one person dies from tuberculosis every 10 minutes. Tuberculosis kills more people between the ages of 15 and 44 than any other disease. What's more, you may have tuberculosis and not know it, because in its early stages, tuberculosis is without symptoms of any kind. Yet, tuberculosis is curable. Help stop it from spreading by getting chest x-rays immediately. And remember, in some places, you can get a chest x-ray free or at nominal cost through your local tuberculosis association or health department. So, check your chest. Get a chest x-ray now. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations and be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Stay tuned now for Lum and Abner. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Network. <laughs>